Hey kids, Dr. Doodle here yet again. That's right, you ain't rid of me yet. Uh, welcome back to the fourth in my series of, what is it? Programming! Alright, I've got a lot to cover in this go-around, so I'll be breezing pretty quickly through a lot of the familiar stuff we should have seen before. Uh, and so if you find yourself feeling lost, just go ahead and slam that rewind, pound the rewind button, uh, till you find yourself at a level of confusion you're comfortable with. And as always, you can go back and rewatch the old videos not back there, those ones back there. Uh, so if there's anything that you don't quite follow, just follow, rewind that, rewatch, rewatch them until uh, you understand what's going on. One more thing I should add is uh, I'm trying something new. I'm going to try and improve my cinematography skills here. So instead of the auto one focus, I'm going manual focus. So if uh, anything looks a little blurry, go ahead and blame me. I can take it. I got big, big shoulders, wide shoulders. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, enough blah, blah, blah. How about we get right down to it? Okay, here we go. Over the computer. We're there. All right. Well, here's our, our latest program. This is QBA04. And uh, as I mentioned last time, uh, we are trying to make a game out of this fool thing we had. So let's see what we got here. Look at here. We got, uh, come out. There's Mr. Derp running around. But look at all these dollar signs here. And we go around trying to get these dollars. Look at there. Woohoo. Dude is getting rich. Just eating these things up. But wait a second. What's happening here? Oh no! Oh, we're dead. Okay, so there's there's our game. Pretty simple. And let's just take a look how this works, all right? Yeah, so here's the uh, the code here, the def int we went over, the randomized timer. Now, this is interesting. If you notice all the dollar signs all over screen, well, that uses a random number generator to put rent to select random numbers or locations to place all those dollar signs. And when you use the random the random numbers, you have to randomize it. In this case, I use the timer, so it just selects whatever time of day it is, randomizes it according to according to what time it is. So each time you play the game, it's a different set of random numbers, different locations for the dollar signs. And again, if you questions about these things here, just look and help. Randomizing timer, it'll tell you more about it. We've talked about the keys and stuff. Now we got a couple of uh, new variables here. This is a line label called restart. If we decide we want to play again, the program starts right over, boop, back here at restart. Count is 100. That's the uh, the number of uh, dollar signs we're going to get. Well, each is a $10 bill, so it's $1,000 altogether. Loose change equals count. So if uh, we decide we want to put 1,000 bills there, well, the loose change becomes 1,000 as well. A uh, redem derp, there's the... the the array we talked about in the last one that holds the derp image. Now the dollar $x and dollar $y count, those store the locations of the dollar signs. You'll see what that's all about when we get to it. Here's x1, x, y1, h1, v1. Those are for Mr. Derp. That's his location and direction. Uh, of course, the y2, x2, that's uh, the dude going around. Score is set to zero to start. Direction is nothing. We go sub draw derp like as before. That just draws a derp image, stores it in this array derp. Now here's a new subroutine called cash money, and that what that does is it just disperses the dollar signs around the screen. We'll talk about that as it comes comes up. Line locate that just draws a line around the screen. Uh, print sound on score zero. So our main program, basically, it's uh, the move derp and move do that you saw before. Just moves the two characters are on screen. Then there's Collision and Cha-Ching, which we'll talk about those as we get to them. And they're basically what makes this the whole game because first of all, we got our up, down, left, and right. Talked about that. Sound toggle, old stuff. Draw derp. Again, we saw that in the last video. Now, Cash Money, as I said, this distributes the dollar signs or the $10 bills. Around the screen, color two is green. For count equals one to count. Now this is, remember we talked about four next loops. They, they're not just back and forth. See, here's four next. Uh, for count equals one to count, which we set earlier up here. Count is 100. So it's gonna go through this loop 100 times. From here to next, here's next. Each time it goes through, dollar count equals random. Remember we talked about the random numbers. Well, randomize generates random numbers which goes into random times 20 plus 3 dollar x so the y and the x lo uh, locations for the dollar signs are all given random numbers using the random function here times 20 plus 3 times 37 plus 3 so that's 20 different uh rows and 37 columns uh don't worry about the plus 2 plus 3 we'll talk about that later we'll locate the dollar and put the print the dollar sign wherever these locations are if that makes any sense to you. Here we, we calculate the, we get a random number and store it into our array. 
for the X and the Y, and then we place that X and Y and print the dollar sign. So next count, that goes through 100 times to all the different dollar signs. Color 14 turns it back to yellow, and then return back to the main, menu, main program. So move derp. That moves derp around the screen, obviously. Move the dude around. Now collision, this is what makes this an actual game. Now actually, collisions are super important. Every game there is. In fact, even programs that are not games use collisions. For example, uh, let's say I, I move in the mouse around here. Let's say, for example, I click on uh, search and find. See, this comes up. Well, what happens is when the mouse cursor collides with the search button, button if I happen to hit the mouse key, now it'll come down here and uh, if it, the mouse button, mouse cursor collides with change, and then I click that, see, now I get to change things. In other words, if one thing is at the same place, at the same time as another thing, that's a collision. For example, um, you fire a bullet at an enemy and you track the bullet, it happens to be the same place, same time as your enemy, then boom, he explodes. Or if he fires at you, or if you're, you're picking up a treasure like these dollar signs, if you happen to be in the same place, same time, boom, that's collision. So we're going to take a quick detour here and I'll show you a program, I, I, a little thing that I put together called the Collides, which said, uh, which illustrates this point a little better. Hang on one second. All right, well, now here is our Collides program. And if you notice, we got all this data up here in these two little boxes. Now that box is stationary there. This one's gonna be moving and you'll see that the numbers change as it does. Now, here's box one X, that's the horizontal location of box one, which is 150 columns over this way. Box two is 50 over this way. And the distance between the two, obviously 100. 150 minus one, that's 100, or minus 50, excuse me, that's 100 pixels apart. Now, if the box one Y is 90, box two is 75, it's slightly higher, so the difference between there is 15. They're 15 pixels apart vertically. Now, if you notice, uh, there's the location, the X and Y of the two boxes. The important thing is the distance. Now, if I move to the right here, watch this box starts moving to the right. Okay, and if you notice up here, the distance is getting lower and lower and lower, smaller and smaller and smaller as they get closer together. Down to 40, 30, 20, counting, and like right now it's zero. And then, but see here, it's going back up now because it's going farther away. And think about it, there is no negative distance. So if I reverse this now, starting to come down 50, 40, 30, until they line up right about there, zero, and up, it's going back up again. Likewise with the vertical, I'm moving it up, and of course here's our X, uh, the Y locations of the two, two boxes. Distance is 20, 18, 10, and zero, and it's the going higher now that this is going lower and farther away from. Remember, there is no negative distance. Even if it keep, goes past, it's, it's, here it's getting closer, 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 and now it's starting to get farther away. So the just distance increases again. Well, what's the collision then? Well, when, when the X distance and the Y distance are both below a certain thing, boom, collision. You see, the y, X distance was only four, and the Y distance 13, box, uh, 13 pixels, or rows, I guess I should say, between each other, so there was a collision. Let's run this again here, and just to, uh, just to solidify the point here. This time we're coming from the side. The Y distance is already one, so it's pretty darn close. X distance is closing, 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 and eventually they will collide, and boom. Collusion detected. That, of course, is a, collect is a, is a collision when the Y distance and the X distance are below a certain limit. Now notice the 13, you would think it would be just one, right, or zero. Well, I don't know if you can really see, if I can zoom in here, yeah, it's out of focus, but this box here is blue, and it's got a little yellow pixel right up in the top left corner. That is all that the computer is tracking. It doesn't know about the rest of the image. It just, let's see if we can focus again, it just tracks that top left corner. So, likewise, it's tracking the top left corner of this image and the top left of that image. So at this point, well, I, let me, I'll show you. We'll change, go to the code here. Collision distance is now 14 or 14 pixels. I'll make this one and we'll see what happens. Run. Okay, here's our 
image I don't know if it's still in focus but in any case you see the box moving toward the other box two toward box one and we'll move it down now should collide oh wait a minute what's going on why is there no collision remember what's happening is tracking just those single pixels so unless we tell the computer how wide the images are it's just looking for there they were exactly over top each other and the, the distance for both is zero so that's a collision but we want to collide even before we hit zero the, the width of the box which is approximately 14 pixels that's why we set the distance to 14 so it does need to be exactly over top each other just within a certain range if it's too close then there if it's too close in both x and y then we get a collision so we'll set this back to 14 run again just to prove my point x uh, the second box moving toward the first box and you notice the x distance decreasing but here 15 the y distance is still 15 so they pass each other but if we bring it down boom it gets down to 13 and there was a collision so even though the yellow pixels, the, the ones that it's tracking, they're 13 pixels apart, but the whole image is approximately 14 pixels, so there was a collision. That's the basis of how collision detection works. It checks the, the difference left and right, up and down, and if they're both too close, it's, they're not passing by vertically, they're not passing by horizontally, they're colliding with each other. And as I mentioned earlier, that is when stuff happens in a program. Whether it's a game, whether it's, a, a, oh, I don't know, the mouse on the screen. If I the mouse cursor collides with the 14 and I click the button, well, now the cursor is over the 14. So that's a collision as well. Now, we'll pause just a moment. I'll bring our, our program back up, and we'll take a look at the collision detection uh, routine, subroutine, in there, and we'll... we'll break it down line by line hang on one moment all right hello again and welcome back to the madness now as mentioned earlier this is the collision subroutine here uh, this, this is collision there's our, our line label collision that's where it goes when it says go sub collision and this detects the collision between the player character and derp now as mentioned we're looking for the distance between the two images both the player and derp and x axis and y axis these are the lines that, that do the actual testing now if you notice we have collide x what that does it tests the location of x1 and x2 that happens to be the character and derp and it subtracts the two to give you a difference of how far apart they are now if you notice we got collide x equals that's abs or absolute it's x1 plus 30 minus x2 plus times 8. <clears throat> if you remember, we had the collide distance of 14 because the image is more than just one pixel wide. That's why we've got plus 30 here, why we've got times 8 here. It accounts for the width and the height of the different images, in this case the player and derp. So we've got x1 minus x2 effectively. And then absolute, what that does it gives you just the, the, the num numeric difference. For example, if you have uh, 100 minus 50, well, then the difference is 50. But if you got 50 minus 100, then the difference is minus 50. And, of course, you can't have negative, negative distance, so it just absolute takes the number, doesn't care about the sign. And it, at the same time, you could subtract y, x2 from y1. I'm sorry. At the same time, you could subtract x2 from x1, or you could subtract x1 from x2. It doesn't matter. All it cares about is what is the difference between the two. And the only time the difference distance will be zero is when they're the same. Same with collide y. We're checking the absolute dis difference or distance between y1 and y2. There's the offset for the width and the height of the image, uh, and both images there. So we take we subtract y2 from y1. Could be other way, one y1 from y2. Whatever that number is, we take the absolute value regardless of sign. Now, if collide y is less than 25 and collide x is less than 25, that means if they're too, both too close, both x and both y, then we have a collision. So if sound equals 1, then we do the sound loop. 
and that uh, for A equals 1 to 5, for Z 55 to 550 step 10, sound Z 0 0.03 next Z, and then next A. Notice we got a loop within a loop. So it comes to the sound and plays this whoop 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 sound five times, 1 to 5. Oh, I'll modify that later, you'll see what that's all about. Next we clear the screen, we locate, I don't know if you can still see me tip it down just a hair. Actually, I'll just scroll the, the screen up here. Yes, yeah, so we locate 10, 6, and print, sorry pal, you're stuffed. Then go sub, play again. At this point, you're dead, and we go to the play again so, uh, subroutine to ask, do you want to play again? We end the if, and then we return. That's the end of the subroutine. That's, that's where the nitty gets gritty. That does all the work right there. Uh, and the cha-ching does a similar thing, but basically it just checks whether you're over top the dollar sign and updates your score. Uh, now, as far as the sound, let's play a game here. Uh, instead of 1 to 5, we'll make this 1 to... Well, first of all, run, start. You'll hear what it sounds like when you collide. Okay, that's hitting the dollar signs. Now, when we collide with... Mr. Derp here. Here it comes. Bop, 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 bop. No. You hear the wop 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 about five times. Well, that's the one to five. Alrighty, now we'll change this one to five, one to fifteen. Start again. And again, we'll collide with Derp wherever he is. Oh. He's escaping us. Now you hear it played the 10 times, whoop, 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 10 times because it's one, instead of one to five, it's one to 10. All right, we'll, we'll set this back to five. Maybe we'll, come on. Oh, this DOS box is so slow, it's annoying. Back to five, and so here, instead of step one, we'll do step, now yeah, make it 20. See what that sounds like. Run, start. Where are you, derper? Cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. Here it comes. Gonna hit us. You hear how quick that was? It's because we skipped more of the sounds and it was just a quick boop instead of the whoop, whoop, whoop sound we heard before. Come on now, bring up, there it is. So make this back to 10. And right, let's take a closer look at this. If sound equals one, then, and then the end if is there. That's the end of the if sound statement. For sound, we'll do Z 55 to 550, step 10. That means it goes 55, 65, 75, 85, and then it plays sound, whatever that number of Z happens to be, for three, I guess, hundredths of a second. Boop, boop, sound like that. Then we got the A, 1 to 5. This loop is inside that loop, so it does this five times, 1 to 5. That's the boop you heard. We clear the screen, we print sorry pal you're stuffed, and then go sub play again. Now for cha ching. Cha ching, if we can get it all in there. Basically the same idea, it's just checking whether you're whether you've collided with one of the dollar signs and acts accordingly. Here it says cha ching, there's the label, update score and retracts your retracts remaining bills. So for count equals one to count, or for I excuse me, for I equals one to count. Whatever you set the count for, $100 signs, $200, $1,000, whatever. If X2 equals dollar sign 1 and Y2 equals dollar Y1, then. What that means is if X2 and Y2 are the same as the dollar sign X, the dollar sign Y, then it, you've got a collision. You've, you've collided with one of the with one of the dollar signs. Now notice the I here. We're looping from one to count, so first it checks the first dollar sign X, the first dollar sign Y. Collision or no, whatever, it goes to the next one, the second dollar sign X, the second dollar sign Y. Goes through the thing, then it checks the third dollar sign X, the third dollar sign Y, whatever I happens to be through this loop. So it checks through every single dollar sign. If you have collided, then score equals score plus 10, and loose change equals loose change minus one. In other words, it's subtracting one of the dollar signs from the loose change that's on screen, so we track how many you've actually got left. Obviously, when you've got them all, there's zero left, and you've won the game. Now we locate print score, and then for Z equals 55 to 5,500, 5, step 100. Basically, the same thing. If sound equals Z, then play the sound. Locate print cha-ching, 
and next Z. That's the sound loop just like we saw up here in collision. And if locate 23 print that clears out the cha-ching after a certain amount of time. Next I if loose change equals zero then well you've got all the, the dollar signs so the game is over. Um, where did I see you? Okay this is important here. If there was a collision if dollar sign if x2 is equal to dollar sign whatever one happens to check the first one the second the third the fourth dollar sign x and y2 is is equal to dollar y1 that or i excuse me then we set dollar sign i whichever the first one the second the third one we set that to zero we set dollar y to zero reason for that is so that it, let's say with the dollar sign is right there you go over here bloop, you hit that spot you get the dollar sign let's say you come back to that point and the dollar sign is still there you get another point for that well you shouldn't because you've already got that dollar sign so this sets the dollar x whatever that dollar signs x location is sets that to zero whatever the dollar signs y location sets that to zero so if you come over again you won't get another point for hitting that dollar sign it's already gone and then it sets score to score plus 10. Uh, here we lose change, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, again, down here, if lose change equals zero, then clear screen. You've won the game, so you get print. Well done, dude. You got them all. And print your killer score was, print the score. Go sub play again. And we'll check that one out here. D, 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 down we go. Play again. Simple enough. As if player wants to play again. Now, we locate that lit that location on screen input care to play again yes or no and the variable here is i y n for yes no then dollar sign because of course it's a string variable it's not a number it's it's a letter now if y n the variable the, the answer with input if that equals yes uppercase or lowercase then go to restart and return if it isn't then it just ends returns and the, the program is done so the return label is where did it go? Uh, or re restart, excuse me, restart. Hmm, where did it go? I know it's here somewhere. I just there it is. Restart. So here's where we set up our keys. That's the restart. If you want to play again, we, first we set up our variables. We set count to 100. That means there's going to be 100 dollar signs. Loose change is the same as count. So if I had to change this to maybe 200, that will automatically make loose change 200 as well. Redeem derp, dollar count, it clears out all the arrays for the dollars for the derp image, and then it sets up the locations of them all. Sound is on to start, score is zero to start, direction is nothing. We go to draw sub, go sub, draw derp, go sub, cash money, draw, go sub, or sorry, draw derp as we spoke earlier. That just draws the image of derp, stays them in the array, which we then move around screen cash money it disperses the dollar signs all randomly across the screen that's the line the little box around the screen locate print sound on and score zero because we're starting with the sound on with the score zero and of course we talked about the main program move derp move dude check for a collision and cha-ching collision of course as we spoke if these two guys happen to collide you're screwed pal you're done so it, it ends the game ask you if you want to play again Cha-ching, if your dude, if the dude happens to collide with the ching, if it runs over a dollar sign, then it, it plays the sound. Hooray, you play the, the, the victory sound, I guess, if you will. Uh, it removes that particular dollar sign from the array so you can no longer collide with it. And then it increases your score by 10. Loop while, while in equals nothing, da, da 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 and then system ends the game. That should just about do it. Uh, hopefully I should answer any questions you have and there's our game how about that we've just written a game well so let's try one more time run start just get a feel for what's happening obviously mr. dirt bounce around the screen there here's comes the duties bounce around whoop just hit a dollar sign there's another there's another and we can loop around the screen oh he got us we're stuffed care to play again no thanks and enter boom there you have it. We've completed our game. Uh, it's called QBA04. And they, as mentioned, I will leave links to this in the uh, down there in that whatever thing, the uh, description box. So you can download this crap and you haven't got to type it out. And you'll be happy. And me too. So thank you so much for watching. And 
that's the end of this particular series, but I'll, I'll have others coming up that we've got this game done. I can show you other cool stuff, maybe a screensaver or something. But for now, see you bye. Thanks for watching, and uh, put ever what comments. Uh, hopefully, all good comments because I'm the most awesome programmer there ever was. But if you hate me, hey, tell me that too. Dudes, thanks for watching. Uh, talk to you later. Bye. See you. Here we go. Bye-bye.